Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm here to show you how I like to darn socks. And so I'm starting off with the sock darner that Patrick made me a few years ago. And he does have a video showing how he did this and he also does sell them on the store. In fact, usually the ones he makes for the store are a little, a little nicer yet than the one that he made me. But I love this thing. He also does make the mushroom style for those who prefer that. I like this bigger one because of the way I like to darn my socks and the parts of the sock that I like to darn. But if you're working with smaller socks, kids socks, or you just want you just want a smaller work area, the mushroom sock darner is also a good option. So if you're interested in any of these, then go ahead and look in the description box down below. You'll find our Etsy link. It's almost always the very first link you'll see as soon as you open up that description box. And how you do that, if you're on a PC, then look straight down right here below my channel name and you should be able to see the words show more in all caps. Click on that and it'll open up the description box for you. Or if you're on a smart device of some sort, right over here under the video in this corner, you should be able to see a little small gray triangle. Click on that to open the description box to see all the links and other information we will have down below. So I've recently changed the way that I darn socks just a little bit. Now, some people really hate to wear darned socks because they feel like there's a lump under the heel, but Really, if you follow the basic principles of darning socks, you shouldn't have a lump. And the way I do it is probably going to be a little bit different than the way other people do it. But anyway, here's uh, one of Patrick's socks. He's actually got a hole over here and then several holes back to back right here where you expect to find it. I'll be darning this whole area, but for today I'll be focusing more on this area and then show you how I do this so that it also reinforces this whole general area right here and to also make it feel like you don't have a lump under your heel. Now I actually find I prefer my darned socks over the socks when they're brand new. I mean, all, we all know that socks feel really good when they're brand new, but especially if you're talking the thinner socks like these wool ones I got here that I talked about in another video. And yes, these are a thinner sock. They were inexpensive. You can find these ones at Costco. I did buy a bunch and for the price, it's really a good deal. However, I am so hard on my socks. I've always been hard on my socks because I'm on my feet all the time, walking around back and forth. And so I'm always wearing holes in my socks. Buying a good high quality wool sock is going to last the longest. Now these ones though, I really like them. They really only lasted me about six months before they started getting holes in them. Same thing go for this cheaper, these ones here, you can see it's all this darned. In fact, I just darned this area again right here. But at the same time, you got to look at your price per sock and time of wear. So buying a package of maybe six pairs of socks, wool socks, that are supposed to be about 85% wool is a pretty good deal for $20. And you can get those at Costco. So I kind of weigh out the cost of an expensive pair of wool socks that might last me several years to buying a pack of socks for that same amount that could last me about that same amount of time. It's still gonna depend on the quality of the sock. Now, several people told me about the darn tough socks. I'd never heard of those until I put out my last video about footwear. I used to get the smart wool, was very happy with them. They seemed to last forever, but something changed along the way and I noticed that I get holes in them a lot quicker than I used to. They still hold up longer than these cheaper ones here, but they've upped their price. So for the price for a single pair of socks and the short time of life, to me, it's not worth it to keep buying those. But I did finally find the darn tough socks. So I did go ahead and spend the money on ordering a couple pairs and I'll be giving them a try. We'll see how long those last. And then I'll do an update on those down the road. I'll go ahead and put the link to the darn tough socks down below so you can check them out for yourself. If I remember correctly, those ones are supposed to be made in the US, which is an added benefit. But paying that much for a pair of socks is really difficult for me to do because usually I could get the, I used to be able to get the smart wool socks on sale for under $10 a pair for the ones that fit me, but now I can't even do that anymore. Just wanted to bring that up. So weigh out your, your cost to wear time benefit. I'll show you real quick. Uh, this is uh, in here is one of the socks that I had to darn. 
And in fact, only one of them got a hole in it. But what I do when I have a pair, when one gets a hole in it, I go ahead and darn the other sock as well because I, I look at it and see, sure enough, it's thinning, it's gonna get a hole any time. But I have worn these quite a bit. Now I've also gone to where I bought socks like this brand new and then went ahead and darned the whole heel before I even started to wear them. Just went through every pair just so that that would last me a lot longer that way. And that worked pretty good. So there's another option there. And that's of course, if you're not into crocheting or knitting your own socks, which I'm not, even though I love to crochet when it comes to working with small things like that, I'll make slippers, but making socks, I don't have the patience for working with thin yarn and small hooks. And it just, it tends to take a toll more on my wrist than working with bigger hooks and doing bigger projects. So anyway, now let's get on to the actual process of darning the socks. So I have here one of Patrick's socks. He used to get these from his work and these were really good socks and he's worn them for years and he's just recently finally started getting holes in them. So I, I don't remember what the brand of these were but they were mostly wool. So what you want to do is when you, you start by turning your sock inside out, that's going to be the best way to start for several reasons. It's going to look better on the outside. If you start from, if you start from the inside because of your ends, and you'll see right there, just position the hole wherever it is you want. Now before, when I would start darning the sock, I would actually start from the outside and work across that way and then this way. And then I would come back and darn again over some more, right over where the hole was. The problem with that method is then, it made it harder for me to, to figure out where that hole was when I did it this way, to find it to do that extra darning right over the hole. So now what I like to do is start right with the hole and darn that area there first, then work to the outside edges and then darn all the way across in both directions. So that's the important part is working in at least two directions. And then the other important thing about this, and I think this is one of the mistakes a lot of people make when they go to darn their socks and why they end up not being comfortable is basically they'll just stitch this together. Well, you don't want to do that because first of all, it's going to change the size and the shape of the sock and you're going to have it real bunchy on the sides. And then you're going to end up more with a seam across here. And that's why you end up with an uncomfortable lump. And that's not actually darning, that's sewing together a hole. So the first thing we got to do is start off with the yarn. Look for a nice fine weight. I think you can, they call it sock weight yarn and look for one that's at least mostly wool. That's going to be your best choice. And we're talking about working with wool socks here anyway, but you can still use this to darn cotton socks as well. And then I like to, I just kind of whatever color, cause I don't care how it looks at the bottom of the sock. Nobody's going to see it, but me when I'm putting it on. And so, I like to pull off about two yards worth, which right there is about two yards. And for most standard size people, a yard is going to be, which is three feet, um, which is smaller than a, a meter. So maybe for you, a, if you're UK or whatever, maybe a meter. That's what I like to start with. So for most people, that's going to be from the tip of your fingers to your nose when you're like this. For me, because I'm short, which means my arm span is shorter. I go this way, that's how I measure a yard. So, and it's pretty accurate for me, but you can figure that out on your own. But anyway, I find this length doubled over like this. So two yards doubled over, so it's one is, is a good place to start. You may still have to cut off more later if you're, if you got a big area to darn, cause I'm gonna be darning a pretty big area today. But for me, it, I like this length to start with. If you find yourself fumbling a lot, you might want to start with a shorter length. It's okay to have more pieces at a time than that. Then you want to make sure you have a nice yarn needle. You don't want it to be too fat because you, you want to be able to be able to sew through the sock easily enough. But I find a stainless steel needle for this job to be a better option. Just make sure you get one that's narrow enough that you can darn with it, but also wide enough hole that you can get your yarn through there. Now, I do believe there's a special darning needle that's curved. I've never tried that one myself. I do really like using the straight needle. It's just what I'm used to. So what I do to thread my needle is you can get any kind of needle threader. They make those little cheap 
plastic and metal ones. But when I'm working with yarn, I like to make my own threader. I have a video actually showing how I do that, how I make this. So whenever you're talking about threading yarn into a needle, it's always best to have a some kind of threader. So I use my threader like that. And I like this homemade one better for yarn than those little chintzy ones that you can buy for thread because they tend to break a lot easier if you're trying to pull yarn through a needle. Please never mind my stained fingernails. They've constantly got my hands in something, so my the skin on my hands and my fingernails are always stained. So anyway, pull that through, and then go ahead and make sure you line up your ends so they're even, and then pull that straight like that. Okay, so I've got the sock on there, and notice how it's kind of stretched out across there. This is one of the purposes of the sock darner. And by the way, there, people do like to use light bulbs for this. So if you don't have a sock darner, can't afford to buy one, an old light bulb will work. But I recommend if you're gonna do that, stick to the LED light bulbs because they're not glass. So they're not gonna break on you if you squeeze too hard or something like that. That would make me nervous, but a lot of people do it that way. So anyway, starting with the hole itself. I'm just going to focus mostly on this big hole. I'll worry about these later because I don't want this video to be too drawn out. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to work at a diagonal. So your sock, think of your sock as horizontal and vertical and I'm going to work this particular stitching over this hole diagonally. So I'm starting right there at the hole. I'm just going to go like that and then I'm going to pull the yarn through until I have a little bit of end there. And if you need to line up your ends again, go ahead and do that. But leave that there. No knots there. You don't want to put any knots in your yarn. And you don't need to, surprisingly enough, because when you start wearing your socks, the, that yarn is actually just going to end up meshing in with the rest of the sock, and it's not going to come undone. I've never had a sock come undone from that. I've never had it uh, pull through while wearing it. So basically, just keep that hole stretched out. Don't You don't want to pull that too tight, and you're just going to keep going back and forth and then stop pulling as soon as it's across there. You don't want to cinch it up tight at all. And then just keep working back and forth like that until you have that whole area covered with that stitching. Okay, so I went ahead and covered this whole area and I brought my needle back over here just to make it easier for showing you how I'm doing this. And I did cover those smaller holes. You'll see a little gap right here, but don't worry about that. That's going to be taken care of as I go back the other way and also when I go darn this whole area again. So this, this is going this way, the yarn that I did first. So now I'm going to work it from this angle. So starting, let's go ahead and start up here with this hole. I'm going to start from this, basically this corner. Okay, and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to weave the needle back and forth over and under the yarn from the previous stitches. And I absolutely do not worry about it being perfectly a perfect weave. You can do that if you want to take the time. I find just working quickly and just getting at least a, a, some kind of modest weave going on there back and forth. See that? like that, over, under, over, under. Even if you just do that a little bit, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. That will be good enough. It's really gonna depend on you and how picky you are and how it looks, but the feel of it is gonna be the same and the wear of it's gonna be the same. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and weave back and forth, and then I'm gonna come back and then show you what I do next after I finish going over the holes. Okay, well that was pretty quick. It didn't take me long to cover that whole area right there where, those, where that hole was. I still have these two smaller holes. I'm going to just work those when I do the rest. So the holes are in this area here. But what I want to do, and how, much, how far out you go is going to be up to you. Because see, I'm looking here and I'm seeing some thin spots. Uh, you can go, I would say go at least a, an inch around where your hole is. You want to darn that whole area because if you just darn across the hole, it's, it's not going to last long at all. So what I like to do is work my needle 
all the way out to the farthest edge that I want this to go. And this is going to be a very wide area and I'll definitely need more yarn to do this. And then I use that same basic idea and I, I work in kind of a round, a square, but it's going to be a little bit rounded square. So starting from here, I'm just going to kind of go up and down, just little stitches like this through the sock and using that same basic idea just up and down trying to work in somewhat straight rows and they don't have to be super duper close to each other you'll you might be surprised at how well even just doing it like this works and i'm going to come back and sh i want to show you this old sock i've had this sock for years so I darned the heel here, in fact this might have been even one I did in my original video, where I darned, I can tell this is there was a hole right here by the layer of yarn here, and then I darned the whole rest of the heel area, Just I just went ahead and followed the pattern on the sock itself. Well then over time, this is what you'll find, is I did get new holes, but it was not in any of the places I darned. It was in the places on the outside edges. So last night, I darned this area again right here. Obviously, this is a different color yarn because honestly, I don't care. And so that should last me for quite a bit longer. But this is normal. You'll see that after quite a while of wearing it, you're gonna, you might never wear another hole in the area you darned, but you might get holes on the outside edges. That's why if you have the time and patience to work out as far as you can, I recommend doing that. So I'm going to get back to doing this and I'm going to work all the way across this way. I'm actually working at a little more of an angle than I meant to, but it, it really doesn't matter. All right, one thing I want to point out is when you're, wor when you're working on the sock, if you fold the toe part over, yes, there's another little hole right here I'll need to get. Fold the toe part over and then hold it like that. That will keep it, as you're working with it, from slipping downwards. So you can just get that positioned on there where, however you want to make it comfortable for you to hold. All right, so now I'm getting to the end of this chunk of yarn. I'm going to have to cut off some more so I can finish this. So what I do is I just, I bring it through until I have at least enough, I can pull it through and just have enough where I can cut it off and leave it there. Okay, and just leave it like that. Now what, one thing you can do is as you go back and you're stitching some more, sometimes I like to move this over here and then just stitch right over the top of it. That also will help hold it, but it's really not necessary. So I'm starting where I left off. Here's the end of the other one. And I'm just going to finish this pattern across here. So I don't have that, I don't have that much farther to go to finish going this way. And again, on that first stitch, check to make sure that your ends are even. It's not super important. It's just going to be a lot easier on you if you do. And then just kind of lay them down there. You can stitch right here. In fact, let me show you. I can lay them down like that. And then when I come back, just stitch right over the top of them to help hold them in place just like that you can leave that a little bit longer if you want all it will do is add a little bit more cush to the sock but again it's not going to come undone or pull out of the sock whether you're washing it or wearing it it will stay in place at least i found with the wool socks no issues with it ever pulling out definitely do want do not want any knots So I'm done working my way across the sock this way and looking at this and you can probably see the difference in color. I should have actually worked this all the way, my rows all the way up to here and I'll probably do that later. I'm not going to do that right now. Let's get right to uh, going the other way. So now that my rows have gone this way, I'm going to start doing the same stitch pattern. I'm going to go ahead and go up there at least a little ways, back and forth this way just weaving it back and forth across the sock again it's going to be a matter of choice at how far out you want to go with that how big you want to make that area but the bigger you make it, the longer it's going to take for you to get holes on the outside edges of your darn 
so that you don't have to come back to it. So even though it might take longer to do a bigger area, you're actually saving yourself time later by just doing a bigger area now. And it's just gonna make the whole thing last longer as well as just give that whole area of the heel a little bit more cushion. And yes, I've actually darned the ball of the foot too. Now that I've got this whole area covered in both directions, if I have any leftover yarn at all, I don't just cut that and, and toss this yarn. I make the most of it by working my way around that area that I just darned, just so I can use up the last of that yarn and make the most of it by doing that. And I'm extending by doing that. There's still that little hole over there I gotta get. I'll, fa I'll worry about that later. So I just kind of work in a circle like that until I run out of yarn and then I cut it. Okay, and there we go. Just making sure there's at least a little bit, maybe about a half inch or so of yarn. Again, what will happen is that will all start to blend in. I'll show you the inside of this. You can see here, this is the area I just darned. This is the old area. You can't even tell where there was ever any ends. It's all just, as you wear it and you wash it, it all just sort of uh, me meshes together and it becomes one with the sock. And that's what will happen here. I haven't worn this one yet because I just did this. And so then after probably even one wearing, you won't even see these ends. Okay, so let's take that sock off of there and see how it looks. I see more holes like along here. I can darn that if I want. This is actually a very well, well used sock that probably wasn't necessarily worth darning, but I figured I'd go ahead and do it for the sake of the video. So we'll turn it back the other way. And then you can see there, it's not the most beautiful thing. And you know what? It really doesn't matter. So as however pretty you want it to look, you can take a lot more time and be a lot more meticulous about your stitches. For me, it's about functionality and getting the job done, especially when I had probably about 10 socks to do because I've been letting them pile up for a little while, partly because I keep meaning to do this video. And so there we go. And that sock, once I finish darning some of those other holes, that should be good. That should last them for a very long time. And then again, there's this one. This one, I don't think this one had a hole in it at all. I just darned it uh, to, to go with that other sock. I've done a couple of his socks, a couple pairs of his older socks like this. All right, so that's how you darn a sock. So whether you have cheap socks or expensive socks and you just wanna extend their life, this is works really good. And the other thing I wanted to say, by uh, going over where the hole was four times, so you go over it twice, as the hole and then you go over the whole area again two more times one one way one the other you've also built up that hole more so that it will match the other the rest of the area because you do want it a little bit thicker the layers of yarn where the hole is darning it the right way and making sure you take your time to just cover a larger area is going to make the difference on it being a lumpy bump on it being a lumpy, uncomfortable sock or a sock that just feels like you gave it a lot more cushion. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this frugal tip on how to darn socks. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.